Hey there, interwebs! I'm just here hanging out with my two science gals, Jed, Sia, and Tendi, because I kind of wanted to talk about something that I've been thinking a lot about lately uh, when it comes to a certain type of science that has become more and more prominent in uh, our discourse nowadays, and that is with artificial intelligence, AI, uh, more, more accurately like algorithms that are being used to sort of replicate things like, you know, chatbot GPT, uh, where it's been used to like make essays and writing by humans, uh, AI art as well about, um, you know, like art that's been created by AI generators. And there's been a lot of really important conversations surrounding AI. And I think ones that are much more pertinent than the one I'm going to be discussing now, things like copyright law. You know, these AIs are sort of scrimming from the internet and sort of stealing a bunch of like, uh, you know, people's art, uh, whether it be writing or, you know, visual art, and then using that to regurgitate new art and how that's taking jobs away from artists who uh, are trying to make money in our world and how capitalism is just sort of using AI to try to just save itself money and sending people out uh, from being able to access more capital, creating, you know, more problems in terms of people being able to access money. Because capitalism is just freaking wonderful. It doesn't view uh, what's good for people, it views what's good for companies and for profit. So that is a much more pertinent conversation that I definitely think we should be having. I'm having it in other videos and things that I'm doing on the channel. But one element too that comes up in this conversation that, you know, I, I don't think is talked about enough but is something that is interesting to me as a creator, as an artist, is connection with art. I always view art as a conversation. You know, people want art to be this thing that is a consumer product, that is either good or bad. It's why we have things like Rotten Tomato, whether it's fresh or rotten. Um, and so when art goes out, people want to view it as like, it's a good piece of art or a bad piece of art, and do we spend money on it, and is it worth my money? But for me, all art is actually conversation. It's why I like engaging with problematic art, art that is not perfect, because no art is perfect, but art that has very interesting flaws to me is cool to talk about because it sort of creates a conversation between me, the art, the artist, as well as other people who also are reacting and emotionally having a, a, a moment with the art. That's why I love talking about Star Trek, because I don't think Star Trek is a perfect science fiction franchise, but it's one filled with flaws and intriguing ones, but ones that we're always earnestly trying in a really great way to have a conversation about humanity today and how we can be better. You know, that's the conversation I want to have about how we are flawed as human beings today, but how we can grow to reach a better future. That's what Star Trek as a work of art tells me. It doesn't tell me we're perfect or that Star Trek is perfect, but that it's having that conversation. But the only way we're ha able to have that conversation is that art is made by other human beings who are feeling the same things that we are feeling, that are going through the same experiences in our world today that we are going through, and that art allows us to articulate these feelings and connect with each other as human beings through emotion, through experience, uh, th vicariously through, you know, visual art like movies and TV shows or video games which allows us to have like sort of culpability in the art. Like it's just, it's a conversation about human experience made by other human beings. And when you look at AI, when it makes these things of art, you know, we may look at it and say, this is beautiful, but it's not really a conversation. All it is is it might be a sort of like pulling from a bunch of different internet things and the one piece of conversation you have about it is like, oh, this is what culturally we kind of view as this thing. Like when I like say tell an AI to like make a dragon, it'll like look and find a bunch of pictures of dragons and steal from a bunch of artists and take their work uh, and then say this is what most likely this is kind of what artists think of as a dragon. And it's like, oh, that's sort of like a general amalgamation of what we as a society view dragons as, but there's no intent behind the art. It's sort of something regurgitating something kind of frivolously and meaninglessly. Uh, it, it's just quite literally making that product, making art that is either good or bad, but there's no conversation, there's no meaning behind it. And I think when we sort of do this with our art, it strips it of, it strips it of its power in a lot of ways, because there's no conversation being had other than sort of maybe the generalized, but even that sort of just gets taken away. There's no meaning behind this work. It's not saying anything to me. And I think that that's really sad. And I also think it's interesting too, because I think our, us as humans wish to often personify AI and try to have a connection with it. We often try to tell the algorithms, like we try to like say like, oh, they're gonna try and murder us and kill us because they're gonna get angry at us and think that we're not worthwhile. Or, you know, even the, the whole idea of the fact that we have these sort of AIs started off as chatbots. They started off as chatbots. Bots that were having conversations with us, that they were like making fake versions of conversations, like we were connecting with somebody, but ultimately just regurgitating stuff back at us. But 
our desire, our first desire with AI was to create chatbots, to create something that would seemingly have a meaningful conversation with us because we as humans wish to connect with something. But there's nothing to connect with there, at least not yet. Maybe hundreds of thousands of years down the line when we are able to, or maybe not that soon, but maybe when the singularity hits and AI has become sentient, like we get a data from Star Trek, maybe that'll be a different thing. But for right now, we're searching for meaning from something that is inherently, in a large way, meaningless. And we try to find it, but it's not there. And so we try to find the emotional resonant connection, but it's not that. And the only meaning you can really find in AI is, number one, the intent of the people who created the AI, which is often very biased, or two, the weird amalgamation of a mass of humanity that has been dehumanized and regurgitated through AI, as opposed to one or several artists with an intent, in just sort of a vomit regurgitation of other people's work. And so that's just something I think about with AI. Obviously, much more pertinent conversations, people's livelihoods are being hurt and attacked because of AI, but that th specifically is just something as a creator that I think about and kind of scares me a little bit.